Welcome back. We continue with the circuit analysis using Fourier series and this is our example number six. In this example, we will look at the problem where we calculate the dissipated power or radiated heat in a resistor where we have applied an input sinusoidal voltage source. So that's actually the example for this video. So let's look at our example. What we have is the following situation. We have the input voltage V in or the input signal and it's applied to a 50 ohm resistor, which is just pure ohm maker resistor. And we would like to calculate the total dissipated power by this resistor of 50 ohms. And this is the input voltage, what we have given. It has a, it's a square wave, which has an amplitude of 1 volt and it has a period of 1 milliseconds. That's actually our waveform. So, of course, as we did in the previous videos, what we will we'll use is the Fourier series representation of our input cycle and then we will calculate what the power dissipation is or what the power dissipation of each component is and then we will calculate using linear combination the total dissipated power for this situation. Now before we move on, let's look at a table of the Fourier series for this particular square wave. If you look at the table of a Fourier series, you will see that the table gives you uh, information similar to this. What you have is the amplitude of your square wave, which is given by A, which is in this time, in this case, one volts, and the period T, capital T, is in this case one milliseconds. So you can now use this formula by comparing actually what you have as A in your original waveform and also the capital T. Remember that capital T is of course related to your fundamental frequency omega zero, which is then two pi over the period. So if I have a period of 0 0.001, one milliseconds, then the omega zero will be two pi divided by that 0 0.001 will be 2000 pi radians per second. So that's actually what you have here. So if I now do the math very carefully, and then the Fourier series for input signal will be this representation. Why do we have this? The A is one, so it's just one amplitude, as you can show here, it's actually one over two, this is for the first term, this is actually also the DC term. This is two times A, which means actually two times one, which is then two and over pi, which is actually this part. And I have a N here in the denominator and I have a sign of N omega zero T, which is just this term. And the N here is, is equal to 2K minus one. And this summation is running from K is equal to one to infinity. That means the K is an integer. And of course the N is all in integer, but N will have an odd number. For example, if you make the K equal to one, then this will be one. But if you make the K is equal to two, this will be a three. So if you make the K is equal to three that will be a five so you can see that for case equal to one you have a n is one for case equal to two you have n is three and for case equal to three you have n is five that means actually the n has a odd number it's of course an integer so that's actually our Fourier series representation of the input signal now the fundamental frequency again is one millisecond that means actually that it's then for capital t one milliseconds the radio frequency again is given by this expression which is omega sub n in general which means the n times the fundamental frequency and the fundamental frequency again is 2000 pi radians per second or you can also look at the frequency in hertz which is then one kilohertz so just do one over that period so what we have then the following if i just substitute also the fundamental frequency in this expression. I have this expression for my input signal. I will use this, the DC term and also the AC terms to determine the power dissipated in our circuit, in this case, 50 ohm resistor. So let's look at the next steps. So we first look at the RMS value, which will be used in our calculations. What is actually the RMS value? RMS value is a value which is actually the value of a sinusoidal voltage that is equal to the DC value that produces the same amount of heat in a resistance as does the sinusoidal voltage. So this is actually a very long sentence. So let's look at it in graphical form. If this is your AC input signal and which is applied to a resistor, that will dissipate some heat. 
Now, what you really need to know is the RMS root mean squared value of this signal, and that is equal to the DC value of your battery. So the DC value, the, uh, the battery, which is also connected with the same resistor, will also dissipate some heat. And that amount of radiated heat is equal to the radiated heat by the RMS value of your AC cycle, not the peak value, for example. So that's actually really important. So if you want to compare that in uh, uh, the correct way, you really need to calculate the RMS value. So that's actually what you have in this picture. So the total dissipated power will be then given by this expression, which is just the p, the power is equal to i squared r or the v squared divided by r. But in this case, you can see that really the RMS value of the current or the RMS value of the voltage is required. Now, the RMS value, which is the root mean square of the current, and this is the root mean square of the voltage. Now, the RMS current and the RMS voltage are given by this expressions. So the, we have the DC part of your current and also the AC part will be each squared and you will then take the square of that one. You will have the same expression actually for the RMS voltage. So if I have of course in this case an input voltage which is a voltage, I need a DC and also the AC terms and then square them separately and then take the square root to get the total RMS voltage. Now, if I look at the situation in more detail and carefully, my signal can be, of course, composed of the AC term and also the DC term, which is just in series. So this is just the battery, actually, the term of the battery, and this is just a pure sinusoidal term. And this will be plotted actually here as shown here, which is applied to a resistor, and this will be just the output. So this is the total input voltage, and this is then the output, which is then across this the resistor. Now, what you see is that the DC level is actually what you see here in this plot. And this Vm, which is actually the amplitude of your AC signal. So AC signal is actually on top of your DC level. And DC level is actually the shift in your diagram or your curve using that AC signal. So that in total will, of course, produce, according to this formula, the total RMS value, which will then uh, uh, cause the radiated heat, which is equal to the DC value of your battery or your DC source. So let's then look at the next step, which is then the calculation of the actual dissipated power. Now, the dissipated power P is the sum of the dissipated power of each component of the output voltage. So we have this, the total power, which can be, of course, then summed as the power dissipation by the DC term, which is then given by P0, plus the P1, which is then the power dissipated by the first harmonic, which is just a fundamental, plus the third harmonic contribution, the fifth and the seventh. You can see that I take the odd numbers because the input signal has also odd harmonics. So I don't need to write down here P2, P4, P6, P8, because that will not contribute any uh, terms here in my expression for the total dissipated power. Or if you don't want to do it here like a, a separate terms here, you can also take them together as we did before. You can calculate the RMS voltage and also the RMS current and then multiply that by the resistor or divide by the resistor. That is also possible. So these will give you actually the same results for the dissipated power. And this is the, again the RMS voltage, again the DC and also the AC terms will be required for the RMS voltage. How do we calculate the RMS voltage? RMS voltage for the nth harmonic will be the peak value of that nth harmonic divided by the square root of 2. That is valid. This formula is only valid for pure sine waves. That means if you decompose your non-sinusoidal signal in pure sine wave, you can use this formula, otherwise it will be not valid. That's actually the power of the Fourier series. We can then use this formula for each harmonic term. So the DC voltage of the signal was given by a half 0.5, which is actually the expression for the Fourier series. So the VDC is now 0.5 volts. 
The AC component of the signal are the following. You can see that also here. This is actually what we had. So again, to remember, this is the expression in total. And if you, of course, make the approximation, you will have this situation. So actually, if you move on, it's 0 0.5 plus the first harmonic, plus the second harmonic, plus the third harmonic, plus the I mean the third harmonic plus the fifth harmonic, I must say, and then plus the seventh harmonic, etc. Of course, this is not the approximate sign, it must be of course equal to because that goes all the way. But if you of course want to sum just the AC terms, that is actually the RMS value of the first harmonic, the RMS value of the third, the fifth, and also the seventh harmonic, and each will be squared and then added together, and you will take the square root. Of course, you can move on to infinity but after some harmonics the contribution will be very small so you will actually cut at some specific harmonics of course if you look at the four harmonic which will be n is equal to one three five seven again the odd harmonics that will give you this and this is an approximate value which is this is exact but this is just approximate i will just take the first four harmonics and you can see that i have just used this formula for n is equal to one for three for five and for seven. You can see that here in the expression. I just did it four times for different peak values. I can see in this expression for my Vn, which is of course exactly equal, not approximately equal, you can see that the two over pi was actually the amplitude of my first harmonic. You can see that here. And it will be of course divided by square root of two and that will be squared in total. The amplitude of the third harmonic which is then 2 over 3 pi which is shown here and the next one is 2 over 5 pi and then 2 over 7 pi and if you do the math here for yourself which is very straightforward for the VAC which is the AC contribution of the voltage will be 0 0.487 volts so I have now the DC and also the AC terms I can now just use these two values and I just substitute in here so this is just of course in volts then the RMS voltage will be this which is 0.5 squared plus the 0.487 squared and square root of that one will be approximately 0.7 and a more uh, accurate value is 0.698 volts. Now I'm almost done because I know the VRMS that will of course allow me to calculate now the, the power display using this formula. So this display the power is then VRMS squared over that resistor where we are actually talking about which is then 0 0.698 squared over 50 will be then 9.50 I mean 9.75 milliwatts in this case you can of course do that also with like this this is of course the approximate value because we only took the first third fourth uh, first four harmonics that's actually what we did, so it is not an exact calculation, but it is very close to the exact value. If you do that, of course, using this summation and of, again, again truncate at the seventh harmonic, then we have the following situation. What we have is then for zero kilohertz, which is actually the DC value, we had the value for the RMS of 500 millivolts. That will give you 5 milliwatts. How do I calculate this? I use this formula. Here, but then for each term I calculate actually power so I do it in this form I just calculate the RMS value which is just in this case 500 millivolts 0 0.5 and I square that and I divide it by the 550 I mean 50 ohms and again I do that for the same for the first harmonic the second harmonic the third harmonic just of course the RMS values actually this one and I have actually these results if I, of course, combine these five powers, power values for each frequency, one kilohertz, three kilohertz, five kilohertz, and seven kilohertz, I get exactly the same result for my power dissipated. So that will mean this value, this formula will produce the exact same value as this one. You can see that is exactly the same. So let's look at the output power spectrum in more detail. Again, this was our power, which was a summation of five terms. It was 9.75 milliwatts. You can see the five milliwatts was the DC value as shown here, which is then in the spectrum given by five milliwatts. The one for the fundamental was 
a power of 4.053 milliwatts which is actually shown here and then you can see for the next harmonic which is a th uh, third harmonics it's like three kilohertz the power dissipation is compared to these for first two very small it is 0 0.450 milliwatts and, and then for the fifth harmonic and for the seventh harmonic it's actually also even smaller so you can see that the truncation at the seventh harmonic is not a bad idea to uh, uh, shorten the calculation because of course you can go to the 9 kilohertz 11 etc but it will of course add very small value to this uh, actual uh, dissipated power so you can see that this is really the final result and a very accurate result for this calculation so we have now determined the output power or the dissipated power and we have seen the output spectrum for each frequency what the contribution is and also the RMS values and we have calculated the dissipated power using the summation of each term and also using the RMS voltage by calculating actually using the DC value of the voltage and also the AC components and that is the confirmation for our results okay this was our example number six about the pure power dissipation in a pure resistive uh, system we will do another example example seven and we will then discuss another array for manual again follow the analysis step by step so i will see you next time and take care